welcome to episode five of Creativity in the Valley. Um, today we have uh, John Butler from John A. Butler who's joining us um, for our conversation today. Um, so John, welcome. Thank you for uh, Thank you. joining us. So the whole point of our podcast is we like to meet with other creative like-minded people. In this instance, you're a photographer, mm -hmm. so obviously a lot of creativity behind that. And we just like to really go about you know, what gets you going, what, what kind of creativity juices help you flow and, you know, gives you your ideas. So that's really what our podcast is all about. Um, you've been behind the camera exactly. most it's of the time, so you important. already know <laughs> what we do. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's what uh, today's all about. So we're going to kind of just jump right into it and, you know, tell us a little bit about John and all, right. all that kind of fun stuff. I can try. Of course, I'm a recluse. I'm very shy. Yes. No, I'm just kidding. Um, no, uh, basically, I... Uh, live in Petawawa with my beautiful wife and two beautiful daughters. Um, and basically, I just basically drive my wife crazy because I breathe and live photography. And I'll be at home, and that's all I want to do is talk photography. And of course, she doesn't want to do that. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's why you meet people like us. <laughs> exactly. Um, don't know what to say. I started my business. Uh, well, I started photography about over 20 years ago. I um, I was actually a rock and roll drummer back then and going to school for that, decided that's not what I wanted to do and changed majors to audiovisual communications, mm -hmm. which actually incorporated photography 101 in it. Yeah. Did that for about a semester, said, you know what, school's not for me and I left. <laughs> Went back to my old job as a parts driver for an automotive place, found a job luckily at a magazine called Muscle Mag International, which got my started in the photography. Um, he had his own mm. bodybuilding magazine, women's fitness magazine, and so basically I... Um, just started taking pictures around the place and he's like, hey, if you get some good stuff, let me see it, maybe I can use it. Yep. And he bought one and put it in the magazine. I think it was like 25 bucks he bought it for. And next thing you know, I've got a picture in a magazine going all over the world with my little subtitle on there. And it's like, hey, this can be kind of fun. Yeah, that's and that's when cool. I started picking it up in that. So back yeah. in the old film days. Back in the film days. <laughs> you can still do film today. Oh, yes. <clears throat> um, and then, you know, where where are you right now in terms of your, your, your photography? And um, I've changed so much like I started off like I said as a bodybuilding fitness photographer so that's all I did was bodybuilding fitness uh, swimsuit things like that yeah. um, and did that for about nine and a half years doing the odd family shoot here and there but basically that's what I did for about nine and a half years while I worked at Muscle Mag um, left Muscle Mag to do it full time um, and that's when I started branching out into family portraits into weddings yes. um, things like that now I find um, I've actually put a lot of that behind me I still have a lot of friends from that industry but I don't do a lot of bodybuilding fitness anymore it's more um, family portraits, weddings, um, starting to get more into the more creative, um, fun, um, just having more glamour and fashion stuff, which yeah. is what I'm And really we'll get like into that because exactly. some of the images we have, um, we so. kind of go, go through that a bit. Um, so, you know, we talk about family portraits and stuff like that. So we have this one image here. Um, I think you just did this this last... That was in the, just, yeah, the summer that just passed. Just the summer yeah. that just passed, right? Yeah, close to fall. Uh, wonderful looking family and, you know, when I look at it, I think the lighting is what really makes this image mm -hmm. kind of pop. How did that shoot go for you? Like, what was so creative about it that um, made you... Well, the one thing that mm. really helped was um, the family itself. Yeah. They were so open to any ideas that I had, but they were willing to bring ideas also. Yeah. So it was a collaboration of that. And then I went and scouted the location a couple days before, actually, because I'd never been there. It was uh, about 20 minutes outside of here, uh, it's closer to Eganville. And uh, they had this property. It's a big country house with country land, lots of trees and brush and rocks. And we found this little area there. And I said, you know what? Well, when I come, I'm going to start right here. And they yeah. were like, okay. So um, I already had it in my mind what I wanted to do with it. Um, so basically, all I did for that, that's just... Um, I guess you would call it a two light setup, but it's basically just uh, one of my studio lights with a battery pack um, with a big, I think it's like a 30, the 32 inch or 35 inch OctiBank as my main light coming in. And then I just, that rim light that's on, you can see the gentleman in the back mostly mm -hmm. and on their hair and stuff. That's basically just the sun, the yep. sky. Yep. So it's just mixing that ambient light Using with yep. the uh, flash and um, able to get that look to make that 3D pop out. Yeah. And, uh, and the reason, you know, that I find it, it's, it's, it's a good use of your surrounding area, I think, is what really kind of makes that, that image kind of pop out. So Well, that's who they are. <clears throat> yep. They live, that's their house, that's where they live, and that's their kind of, even the clothing, like I'm not big on patterns and that, but with this, with the plaid shirt, it, it still worked yep. because that's who they are. You want their character into this picture. And um, the, the little girls were just like, oh, Awesome, right? Oh, they were amazing. They were a ball of fun, um, flying all over the place. They couldn't wait to get their picture taken. 
Well, that's awesome. So now we're going to go into the questions about creativity and, okay. and kind of explain what it is that gets you going. So my first thing is, do you strive to be unique or creative in your endeavors? And then kind of expand on that. Why? I do. I'm all, I think everybody that's in a creative field like this, you always want to do something that's going to be you that nobody else is doing. So you try to do that little um, creativity where it's unique to you. But I think what happens is um, you still end up, it, when you get your personality into it, you still end up doing stuff that um, a lot of people can relate to. So as unique as it is, um, I find my stuff still tends to, to sort of favor, I guess, some of the people that inspire me. Yeah. Um, and um, I think the only way to make it unique in yourself is... Um, to work with the client itself okay. because you got to bring yourself into it, but you want to make sure you get what the client wants too. Yeah, absolutely. And so as unique as you want to be, sometimes they don't want that. No. And, and sometimes that's where you just got to say, you know what, what can we do together to still make it unique, but to make it ours. Yeah. And okay. that's all I can no, think That's of. a good one. Uh, and then you were talking about the experiences and the people that inspired you. So the next question is again, um, who or what experience have inspired you towards the path you've been taking? Um, I like, the stuff I like to look at are the stuff that makes me have to think. Yeah. Um, I love stuff like uh, Annie Leibovitz, um, who some people don't know is uh, a lot of Rolling Stone magazine and now does a lot of stuff for Vanity Fair over the last couple of years. I just love the way she can take groups and just make it look so simple, but mm -hmm. at the same time, just something that um, is, like you said, unique. Um, the way she does her groups and just the way she spaces them. Um, so I love looking at her work. I love um, watching uh, a commercial photographer named Carl Taylor, this stuff, because he's got that commercial background. So he's more of the technical. Mm -hmm. um, so I like watching that just to see the technicality of how I can get this light to do that or how I can do this, but then bring it back to like an Annie Leibovitz type of thing where it's more feel. Yeah. Um, because without the feeling, you don't have a picture. Yeah, That's so I, I want to add to the lighting part there. So right now we have this image, which I know you think, you, think you just did the last couple of weeks or something, something like, like that. Yeah, uh, you know, and when you look at lighting wise, I mean, this is a very well lit subject and you were just talking about, you know, the technical side and, and being able to know, um, you know, how you light and every stuff like that. So again, let's kind of just talk about that image okay. and why it kind of, ins who inspired you? Sure. Like, you know how, how it kind of went with that. The funny thing about this was, um, I love black and white. Yeah. I think it was maybe my, my background in the bodybuilding fitness where that black and white, getting the textures and that, um, maybe installed in my mind a lot. But I love doing black and white. So whenever I get a chance to do it, I'm all for it. And this was actually the model there, uh, Anne Marie there, this was actually her idea. She mm -hmm. had a plan. She had a picture she had seen before and said, this is what I kind of want to do. And I, she's like, can we do this? I'm like, sure. Yeah. So uh, very simple. I think there's... Um, um, you got your main light uh, coming in, and I'm not. I, I'm very much into um, three-dimensional textures. I don't like that flat look, mm -hmm. unless it's something that really garners for that. I like to bring it off to the side a bit, get those shadows on the one side. Um, I, I'm also very much not into fill light. Mm -hmm. I like to use reflectors. Yeah. I just I like the subtlety of them, and I can adjust them just by moving them. Yep. Uh, and I believe there's a reflector to the one to the right side there. Um, yeah, right now I'm looking at this and I think there's a light here, yeah. there's a light here, exactly. and then there's a reflector here. Exactly. That's so what basically I'm you got the main light coming in on her from the camera left or the yeah. model's right. Yeah. Um, I'm saying that on the and podcast it's feathering. and people yes. have no idea what exactly. I'm like lighting <laughs> So it's feathering them. <laughs> it's feathering the light on her a little bit more. It's nice and close to make it nice and soft, but still have that little gradual shadows. And then to fill in the shadows a bit, I bring a reflector into the side a bit to my liking, yep. to where it's nice. And then I have a, another light coming from behind opposite the main light. Yeah. Um, so to the camera right behind her, up really high in a, um, with a strip bank, yep. which is a, a long strip light there that not only acts as a, a sort of like a kicker on the back shoulder a little bit, I didn't want too much on the shoulder because I still want that shadow, that I want that contrast, but it gives a nice little hair light. Yep. And then the background is just a gray seamless backdrop that um, just has an even light on it. And then sometimes what I'll actually do, and I don't think I did on this one, but sometimes I do is um, depending on how high your ceiling is, I'll actually take a studio light with nothing on it, yep. just the normal reflector that's on it, and I'll go really high and I'll just bounce it off the ceiling. Yeah, it makes a big soft box, it's like a sky almost, and it just brings that nice little yeah. subtlety to the hair, which is really nice. <coughs> and uh, you're using the gray because you know that's my favorite uh, exactly. backdrop to use. Yeah, it's, uh, it's gray my, and white is my, my favorite. Too, exactly. <laughs> All right, so let's go on to the next question. Um, my, my third question is, when was the first time that you kind of realize that you are, you are a creative person. I mean, you're talking about drumming and everything mm -hmm. like that. I mean, drumming requires 
I think Some basically of that. I've always, in my family, I've always been, I guess, the artsy one. Yeah. Because I grew up with uh, three brothers, an older one, two younger. And in our house, it was always sports. Yeah. Like we were in hockey rinks six nights a week. We were co coaching, playing, refereeing. Too, right? Exactly. <laughs> like we lived in the hockey rinks. Even in the summer, like we played soccer and baseball, but always went back to summer hockey too. Yeah. So it was a big family of sports orienting. I was really the one that got, I guess, creative into the arts. Like I started off as a drummer, yeah. growing up in school, playing in bands and stuff like that, playing in school bands, playing in rock bands, everything like that. And then as soon as the camera hit me, I thought, you know what, this is a medium that I think I can be creative and I can actually express who I am. Mm -hmm. I found in the music, in the, as a drummer, it's hard to do that because you're in the back of the band. Mm -hmm. You're always in the back burner. Um, here I can stand up, I can still do what I gotta do, but not be in the forefront, if yeah. that makes sense. It does. Um, but it also, um, as you know, as photographers, we are, in our brains, people don't want to be in our brains no. because we got things going on in there that, um, and it's even harder to try and put it on paper because yeah. you get a model, they're not in your brain. No. They don't know what vision you're looking at. And yeah. I don't know how many times I'll, I'll go do a family shoot and I'll say, you know what, or even a wedding. You're saying to the bride and groom, okay, we're going to put you over there and I'm going to, this is what I'm going to do. And they're looking at the background like, Really, he's gonna make that look yeah. good. Like, like that's terrible. And they don't see what we can see through that. We know what each lens can do. We that's know true. what this. And it's not until you take that shot and you show them, say, "This is what I want to do," and they're like, "Oh, they okay." Yeah. Then they see your vision. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I think I've always had that creativity in me. It's just a matter of photography's been a way for me to get it out. That's very cool. So. And you're talking about the drummer. It's, it's just cool. So we got Brian behind one of our cameras today, who's uh, like, you know, the, the engineer guy exactly. for the, the tracks and that. You're a drummer. I play guitar. We should just start a Auto Valley Studios band. And there you go. We're good to go. <laughs> Bree, can you sing? <laughs> Agata. There you go. I get it. Okay, uh, next question. So this happens, I know what happens to me and, and it's very kind of, I mean, it happens a lot in photography, but how do you deal with creative blocks? Ah, oh, that's a good one. Um, and I go through that a lot. Um, I find the best ways for me to get out of creative lock is, um, it's, it's a multi-process. One is uh, stuff like Instagram and Pinterest. Mm -hmm. I love those for creative blocks because um, I follow people on, in, on um, Instagram plus people on Pinterest. You can go on there and you just, mm. you just look at the stuff that's out there and it just yeah. gets you inspired. Like yeah. if I'm going to do a wedding the night before, I might sit on some of these other sites, uh, Pinterest, go to some websites, type in weddings uh, in uh, wedding photography in Google and just look at the things yeah. just to get some inspiration with what you maybe want to try and achieve. Um, and believe it or not, the, the other two that I think Get me out of that creative block is a driving. Mm -hmm. Don't ask me why, but I could be driving down the street and you just see something, or something just pops in your head. Yeah. And I think uh, an old uh, uh, a composer, David Foster, he used to do that all the time. There was uh, I saw the making and when he did that, "We Are the World" type of thing. Um, I think it was called "We Are the World," or yeah, it was "We Are the World." Yeah, it was "We Are the World." Um, and you see him in his car with a tape recorder, and he's actually singing the actual notes. He's he's humming it and then he's saying B flat, C flat, all right? Yeah. And so that when he gets back, he hasn't he forgotten. Remember, so yeah. it's, it's kind of like me, I'll be driving and then things will just pop in my mind. And the other thing is shower, believe it or not. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> you don't want to go into detail. Sitting in the that. shower and things <laughs> just go through my mind. And, uh, and you know, we, I mean, I know one of the things uh, you, you've been trying to do a little bit more, you have been trying to be more creative with some yeah. of your images and this one, um, I believe this is your daughter, That's right? That's my okay. youngest daughter. Your yeah. youngest daughter. So, you know, let's talk about that because okay. there's a lot going on with this image and- Sure. That was actually, um, I believe I had my children at the studio to actually do like a family shoot um, with their cousins. So uh, one of their cousins in the military out, out west and he was back for, I think that was around New Year's, like in the January. And so they wanted to get some pictures with their cousins in the studio. So we're shooting away. We got everything we needed. The cousins left. And then um, the funny thing is she, my daughter there, she found that mask. I think that's one of Brian's masks actually. Yeah, and she found that sitting in the studio. She's like, can I get a picture with this? I'm like, sure. I don't think Brian's got mine. So we grabbed it and she, it's just against a gray backdrop actually. Yep. I just, she picked it up and then I said, okay, stay like that. And I shot it. And then when I got home, all of a sudden, instead of just making it just a normal shot of her holding this mask, I thought, okay, let's get these creative juices going. And so just a mixture of uh, Photoshop and um, Nick software. Yep. Um, I just came up with this, um, this, what I find is kind of a surreal, um, almost looks like an 1800s ball, mm -hmm. get ready to go for a ball. Yep. Uh, added the textured yeah, background, the texture. added the golden mm -hmm. hue to everything, just to sort of warm it up, but I didn't want it, her face to go too warm. Yeah. And my biggest problem I find when I'm doing this is I have the ideas in my head and how do I do it? Yeah. Like how can I make that vision in my head do it? 
and then make it look real. Yep. Um, there's so many times where you'll see we do a shoot, um, any photographer, and sometimes you do it and it's like you have to redo it again. Yeah. You have to redo it because you just it's not working it's not for working. you, or it doesn't look real. It doesn't look like she was shot against that background. Yeah. Or something. It, it happens, so, right? And and to me that that's her personality. She's yeah. just like that. She's bubbly. She just wants to try new things, and she's just always smiling and. Um, and to me, my favorite part about that, I think, is her eyes. Yeah, they just yeah, pop. it's a great, it's a great, it's they a great just shot. Pop right out. She has got a very natural smile happening. Exactly. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure if we have this image up, but you know, is there? A f do you have a favorite creation, like a favorite piece that you've created? I do actually. There's one. Um, I think I gave to him was the pirate. Yep. Um, that's actually a local friend of mine here. Uh, he has a company called Sunshine Graphics. Yep. Uh, Robin Jarda, and um, this was part of um, how vendors get together and do things together. Um, there was a hairstylist salon that was in uh, Petawawa that was running a princess thing for a day where you can actually, your daughter can come in, I, I can't remember what they charged, charge a minimal amount, they bring their daughters in dressed like princesses, all the staff was dressed like princesses and they can come and get their hair done like a princess and their makeup and they had little treats for them yeah. and they had me set up in a little teeny room, like not half the size of this room, um, where after it was done they could come up get their picture taken, mm -hmm. and then I just donated my time, and then everything, we went back home, I got them all ready, and put them on a link, and said, here, you can download them right from here, they're yours, do what you want. It was yep. a way that I was helping out, because they had helped me out in yep. the past with stuff. It's a community thing, right? Exactly. Yeah. So it was something, a way to give back. So we did that, and it's funny, because this shot, I've actually got a, only a four foot pink backdrop that's on, going down onto the floor, so I can shoot these little girls, and he comes in with his daughter, he's dressed like a pirate, mm -hmm. and I'm like, as he came in, he got his picture with her, and he's like, I'd like to get one myself. I'm like, okay. So I shot it, and actually the backdrop, the way I shot it, it's coming through his head, so you see some of the ceiling. Yeah. And I showed him the picture. I said, you know what, this is the picture I love. I said, don't worry, it's not going to look like this. Yeah, I'm going to make this look pink, amazing. Pink backdrop. And so he trusted me with it, and I took it home, and it probably took me about a month before I actually worked on it, yep. before I actually had the chance to sit down and really work on it. Mm. My whole vision for that was I wanted it to look like that old 1800s pirate coming off the boat, going into a saloon, and they just happened to have this little photo booth in the corner, he just went and got his picture taken. Yeah. And, because he pulls the part off so, sure. um, so well. And that belt clip that he's wearing there that has the knife in it, yeah. he actually makes that, he made that himself. He's, he makes these little leather things all the time. Definitely. And so it's a part of him in there, and this is his personality, he's totally out there, just, he, he's one of the funnest guys you'll ever meet. So he went with it, and uh, so I, it worked, I had to work with it a couple times in that, but I was able to get that old texture, that sort of sepia, but more of a warmish type of sepia to it. Yeah. And I think I pulled it off. Um, it, it, it came out the way I wanted it to. It's probably one of my favorite pieces I've yeah. done in the last no, it's year. A, it's a very, very good yeah. piece. Um, so that's kind of the creative side. Now, mm -hmm. a lot of these next questions you actually answered at the beginning was like, you know, how long have you been... Being, yeah. How long have you been a photographer? Well, like 20 plus years, something right? Like so yeah, around 1992, something like that. Um, we talk, yeah. already talked about how you got your start. It was with the muscle mag mm -hmm. and the fitness and everything like that. So you're just like going through. So then it, this is a tough one because you didn't bring your camera with you, but no what's in your bag right now? Um, well, I'm probably the only one in the studio that Cannon. actually shoots Canon. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I have a, multi, a couple Canon cameras in my body and my bag at all times. Um, I also, my favorite go-to lens, 7200, yep. 2.8 lens, I just, I love that. I can put that on my camera, leave it on there all day if I had a chance. Yeah. Um, I just love the compression it does and just what I can do with it. Um, I have my uh, 1635, uh, 2.8 lens by Canon, or no, it's the F4 lens actually, it's the image stabilized F4, the new one that just came, I love that lens. Mm -hmm. um, it just, it gives me a perspective, like I'm still working right now on, uh, I like using my crop sensors yeah. because I do a lot of sports photography and I like to have that it's zoom. Extra, um, and the cameras are so good nowadays that for what I do, I don't need um, the larger sensor yet. I know I'm gonna break down and, <laughs> eventually. and eventually do it. But, uh, but yeah, so that's why I, I love my 1635 um, and then my 50, yep. the nifty 50 as they call it. Yep. Um, I love that for portrait work. Yep. Um, because on that crop sensor, it is like a portrait lens. Yeah. It is like an 80-85, so I love that, uh, that lens. Um, I don't, I'm not a fan of using on-camera flash a lot. I, no. I do have multiple flashes in there. I mean, you need it for weddings and stuff, but yeah. um, even when I am using it, I'm never pointing yeah. at the people, I'm bouncing it off ceilings and walls. Yes. And I just, I don't like the look of it. If I can get it off camera, I will, so. It's, I wanna talk about the, the <clears throat> um, on-camera flash. It's the one 
thing that I think any photographer that starts off should know to never use that flash that's built into oh, the I camera. Tell, I tell my students in the classes that I teach, <laughs> never. That if I had the chance that I could rip that right off the camera I, and throw it, I would. I almost wonder why they even bother putting that thing exactly. in there. Like it's now, just, the only thing that I do say that would be good mm. use for that is if you're using it to trigger something. Tone it right down yeah, so it's not affecting the picture. Yeah. And you can use it to trigger other flashes. That I understand. But like you said, to just sit there and, no. It's... Yeah, I hate that thing. Okay, so uh, I want to go on to, so we, again, it's about creativity and everything like that. And one of the things that you're trying to do and get into is the pinups, right? And um, this is one image that uh, stood out for me from your pinup collection mm -hmm. that, um, that I've had a, a look at. And the nice thing about this, I mean, aside from your model and the um, ironing board, mm -hmm. everything else is comp. It's all comp. Um, I learned this technique from a, a friend of mine named Mike Long out of Portland, Oregon there. Um, it's a style that he does. It's the old Vargas style pinups, uh, but you do a modern twist to it. So you don't even have to have the old pinup outfits if you don't want to. Like It is nice. We do have the sundresses that we get them to wear and stuff, but um, it's a way that the woman can come in and be anything they want. It's, mm -hmm. it's uh, like, you know, shooting boudoir, you have the sets there most of the time. And so it's, there's a look that you're going for. Yep. With this, we, it's all done with consultation because you need to, because you got to get that look that they want. And then, like you said, we'll shoot the model. She's actually just standing there holding the iron, yep. the ironing boards in front of her with the shirt on it. Yep. And like you said, that's all that was there. We added the floor, the baseboard, the back wall, uh, the, even the spot on that back wall. Yep. The clock is added in, and even the smoke on the iron is added in later yep. on too. It's so it's all done so that the model can just have some fun. Yeah. Um, it's shot against just a plain gray or white backdrop. Even when I use the white backdrop, I let it go to a, a neutral gray. I yep. light it. Uh, we use a flat lighting for this. Um, and then, like you said, we just comp it together. And it's, it's one of my favorites, too, because it's a way that I can get into the comping a little bit more yeah. and be more creative instead of just shoot it and there it is. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, that's a, that's a super great one. Exactly. Um, so then, you know, again, you, you kind of touched on this, too, but what are some of the photographers that have influenced you, um, especially more, more recently, right? Because mm -hmm. you're trying, you've been trying exactly. to try different things. Who's been inspiring you to, to kind of... Um, it's been a lot of, like I said, Carl Taylor with his commercial work. I love that. Um, and if you ever change, he's a, he's a photographer out of UK, yeah. um, Carl Taylor um, photography. Um, Annie Leibwitz, that kind of stuff. But also, um, I've gotten into some lo more local Canadian talent. Uh, we were talking about beforehand, like uh, guys like Benjamin Von Wong yeah. with his compositing and, and just the way he's, his wacky mind works. Um, I love looking at his stuff and watching his behind the scenes videos. Uh, Renee Robin was another one I said. She's out of Edmonton there. Um, she does a lot of stuff similar to Von Wong, um, does a lot of uh, um, comp work. That's mostly what she does, is just comp work. Um, so people like that inspire me. I have a couple friends um, out of Sudbury, yep. uh, James uh, Hodgins and um, uh, uh, Rob uh, Pl Provence, who um, basically in the last, I'd say about the last five years have inspired me the most. Mm -hmm. They're like mentors almost. Mm -hmm. um, we're part of a forum together and anytime I need inspiration, I can talk to them yep. about it um, or send them a little message and they're really good at getting back. And So those are guys that I look at yeah. and, and they're all different, which yeah. is what, what I like. It's always good to have yes. um, that, that, that kind of group, right? Exactly. That helps you kind of build that way. You get and guys like Rob, get stuff like Rob Blanche I was right? about, who's been in the business for over 30 years. Yeah. And so he's got, a, when it comes to weddings and families, I mean, he's a, just a ball of he knowledge. There, yeah. So so my <laughs> last question, well, I mean, I'm going to have another one at the end here, but my last one is, because I liked your answer to this, <laughs> what do you feel is the most important post-processing <laughs> technique? Because your answer was awesome. One of them was, yeah, that, that was one of them, is basically uh, my my biggest secret is my wife. Your wife. <laughs> because uh, I do, I do mm. lately, I've been doing a lot more of my own uh, post-processing and that, but for the longest time, my wife's been doing it, and she still does. She Even yesterday, she was down, I did some headshots in the last week, and she's been down there getting them all prepped and that, but yeah. My wife, um, it's funny, I taught her Photoshop yep. like probably like seven, eight years ago. And, uh, but now she's better than she's I am. She's better than you. And <laughs> so I, I will do, I will work on a, a, a subject, like maybe a headshot or something. And then she'll look and say, oh, I'm going to make that better. And she'll <laughs> go and she'll blow me right out of the yeah. water. So she is my biggest secret. That's actually kind of pretty cool though, to have that like in your back pocket. It's like, I'm going to take the picture and then darling, you're going to take care of the but rest of it. I also think <laughs> simplicity is probably the best post-processing workflow because there's so many times in Photoshop, and I'm sure you go through this more than I do because mm -hmm. you do a lot of more comp work is you can go too far. Yes. And because there's always like, oh, well, how can I push it more? How can I? And sometimes just. Yeah holding back it's, it's true and just saying you know what I've done it it's, it's, it, it's ready to go it's true and I mean I want to add to that because yes I, comping is kind of what the things I do and simplicity is probably I think for anybody that wants to get into comping is a, is a good thing to understand is you can do a comp very simple very sure. it doesn't have to go and be like 
2,500 layers or anything like that. You can do a comp yeah. in, in a simple manner exactly. and, and not overdo it. So. And keep the eyes sharp. Yeah. That's my biggest thing is the eyes. Nice. And then again, do you have a, well, actually, no, I'm just going to go to, you have one wedding here in the haystack. Um, yes. I'm just going to bring that up. The, this is, a, it's a beautiful image. Um, you know, the, it's more of a traditional. Image. What made you choose to put them there? At that, you know, that that spot. We, we lucked out that the location that they had chosen for this, um, for the bride and groom stuff after the wedding was not was a, a big farmhouse, and there were so many different. I was able to get so many different looks, but there was something about that barn yeah. that had um, the haystacks were huge, and there was tons of them. It wasn't mm -hmm. like they were just sparse. Yeah. They were there, and then just the color of the. Um, the barn I saw, but it just it just contrast, yeah. and then that dress was just gorgeous. Yeah, and I it's more, you know, now we're not as much traditional as we used to be. Um, a lot of wedding work now is more, um, we call it freestyle, mm -hmm. where it's traditional mixed with candids and mixed just more the modern look to it. Yeah. but that to me felt I can do a nice traditional portrait. That's one that can go up as a, a twenty by thirty up of a wall, yeah. some uh, like a fireplace Absolutely. or something, and. Um, and I wanted, she loved that dress and she loved the back of it. And she's like, can we do something with the back of my dress? Yeah. So I said, perfect. And we were shooting some stuff there. And I said, let's do it right here. And there was just something about that haystack. I don't yeah. know. I just, I found it made them pop out. It does. Well, no, it does. And it that's what it is. It gives a good stand. Because when it comes down to it, the wedding's about the groom, groom and bride. Yeah. That's all it's about. So show them. Although on your wedding day, it's not about, it's like everybody else. It's about everybody else <laughs> except you. So <laughs> it's, uh, and then, you know, do you have any good stories or funny moments from a photo shoot? I, probably the funniest one is actually from a wedding. Um, it was a few years back, and what it was is um, it was winter, one of my winter weddings. And this was, I think, around January, February. Yeah. And <clears throat> there's a place in Petawala here that has um, uh, an, a bridge that over goes over top of the, the river there. And to get to this, you have to go through this little corridor way. <clears throat> you have to drive in to get into this one little space by the bridge that I wanted to shoot them at, the whole wedding party. Well, in the winter time, at this time I didn't realize it, they make that into a snowmobile path. Okay. And cars are not supposed to be in there. Okay. So I drove in with my all season tires. I was fine in my van. The bride and groom or the bride with her bridesmaids drove in, not knowing that the bridesmaid that's driving in her car, a little cavalier or something like that, had oh, summer tires on. And the guys all stayed back, even though they had the nice big trucks. The one guy was a tow truck driver, and he's telling his guys, like, no, we're not supposed to be in there. So they actually radioed to us on their phone saying, like, we're not coming in. We're not supposed to be in there. We're like, okay, we'll come back out. Well, as I start driving back out, I'm noticing them that they're not following they're not me. Following. So I get back there, and here their tires are spinning. They can't get out. <laughs> now, I wish I had my camera ready, but I felt bad because I'm the one that brought them into the yes. end. So I'm behind with all the bridesmaids pushing this car yes. while the bride's in there flooring it, trying to get it. And somebody was walking by, and they... They were like, you know what? I wish we had a photo of that because it was the funniest thing you ever that see. Would that would have been the co the perfect wedding photo. The yep. bride driving with these guns pushing. Yep. Never got thought to get it, but it took us probably 20 minutes to get out. We had snowmobilers going by yelling at us, but not helping. Oh, that's nice. You're eh? ruining our tracks. One finally pulled over with his kid and they came and they actually started and we yeah. were able to get him. And then I just followed them out. And we cute. finally got out. So I made up to him. We went to a place. We got a lot of beautiful pictures, but it made for a great story that night at the speeches. Yes, it would make a great story. And that's probably the funniest one. <laughs> Thank you to the photographer for getting exactly. stuck. <laughs> and nobody got all dirty in that because it was just snow whipping at yeah, them and stuff. So. so the last thing I want to talk about is your sports photography. Because, um, I mean, I personally, I think in terms of our town, uh, there's nobody else that can that can do it like you do, really. Um, and I almost wish I know there was some things that happened with the Lumber Kings uh, in the past year or so mm -hmm. in terms of like you know, um, yeah. however the hockey stuff works yeah. with them. But uh, you got the nice group picture of here, and you've yeah. been lucky enough that for the last three or two years. Yeah, this was my I think this was my third. This is your year. third year now, right? So, Where yes. you've had the opportunity to work with the Lumber Kings. Um, again, you know, your your sports photography is um, kind of. It's it's fantastic for for the area. I and think my hockey background helps out. Yeah, that does help. Yes, being Canadian probably helps <laughs> being too. Being Canadian, eh? <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a great uh, it's a great shot. I mean, you can't be so you can't be very creative with the regular no. group shots. But in terms of the lighting and getting them all lit, I mean, that is this a challenge. This was a little different than last, the last two years I shot them. The first couple of years, um, we basically just front lit them. Yeah. With uh, with a couple lights to get that nice even light. Um, and there's little tricks you can do to because I'm just using umbrellas on this. I'm not using anything no, extravagant. Yeah, just yeah. anything that any photographer can go and buy. It's just uh, two studio lights with two um, umbrellas on each side. But I'm crossing the streams yep. to get that even light because if I lit one facing one way and one the other way, 
you either get too much in the center and it would fall off, yep. or if you do it on the sides, you get too much there and they would fall off. So uh, if you cross it and have the, the right one lighting to the left side and vice versa, it does that cross light and just evenly lights it. It's really nice. Yep. But this year I decided to go a little different and I actually added two kicker lights. Um, you can sort of notice it on the left and right from behind coming on the sides of their face there and yep. on their hair. Yep. I just wanted to separate them from the background. Now what people don't realize is in these, when you go into a hockey rink, it looks pretty bright. Yes. But it's not. To the naked eye, our eyes adjust. Yep. But the camera doesn't know that. Nope. And uh, so it's a matter of, you just got to let the background go where it is unless you want to light the background. And I didn't, I didn't care. That's not my subject. The subject yep. are the people. Yep. Um, they're lucky enough to uh, be able to do it on the ice. They have their logo right on the center ice there. So that helps out. I try not to cover it too much. And uh, we always three-tier it with these guys. Yeah. There's so, so much. If it was two-tier, it'd be too long. Too long, yeah. Uh, with minor hockey, we can get away with that. With it's, these guys, we can't. This is a really good shot in general because, again, you don't really see that, that good of quality for oh, your sports you. photography, right? And it's really, really exactly. awesome. The hardest part is getting them in, in the proper order because there's different ways. I know some sports teams that actually go by number order. Yeah. But then I like the heights. heights. I want to make sure that the heads are, you don't want a tall guy on the one side and then go into a short guy and then go back up to a tall guy again. Yep. I, I like to balance it out. The only the rule I have is the front row. I always put the goalies on the ends. I always put the captains in the front with the coaches, yep. if I can. No, it's a really, really good shot. Really, really good shot. Sometimes I've actually had the coach in the middle too. <laughs> Depends on how many coaches I got to get in there. Well, that's like all the questions I have for you, which is, you know, not, not bad. Uh, I want to thank you for obviously yep. coming by yep. and uh, hopefully Appreciate you enjoyed it. your time with us. Exactly. Next time, hopefully I'll be behind the camera again. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you will be, right? <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's, uh, that's episode five of yes. Creativity in the Valley. And we had John A. Butler from, well, John Butler from John A. Butler come by. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining us and have a great day. Um,